So, Dan, let me ask you a couple of questions. I want to get into Texas uh, here in a second, but there's two stories that boggle my mind that I think you're uniquely qualified to talk about. One is this story from military.com today. The Navy is making all sailors reaffirm the oath to the Constitution in the extremism stand down. I find this incredibly insulting. Can you comment on this? <laughs> yeah, I, <coughs> I'm sorry. I don't have coronavirus. I just got some of my throat. Um, I haven't <laughs> heard that story, but it's, um, it's concerning. Look, I, on the one hand, I'd love for sailors and Marines and, and soldiers to uh, reaffirm their oath to the Constitution every morning. I agree. And pledge, the, and pledge their allegiance as well. Why not? Yep. But this pretense is, is concerning, and it's, it's clearly, it's so obviously and clearly politically motivated. And so let's just, let's just for the viewers who I think are aware of this, let's back up a second. I think the premise of this is that, well, we had a lot of veterans at, on January 6th at the Capitol, right? That's the premise of all this nonsense. Um, but that, just mathematically, that's, that's not a good indication of where active duty military stand or, or where veterans Correct. stand more broadly. Right. Just because there's a lot of people here does not mean that a large proportion of those people are indeed extremists or bad people. Correct. And and and, and wait a second. I thought we were against that kind of profiling. Right. I, I thought that was <laughs> against the very liberal values that supposedly the left stands for. But, Glenn, you know very well, the left is not liberal. The left is very anti-liberal. And, and I think as conservatives, we've got to say that more often. They're, yes. They, are, they have become genuinely authoritarian progressivism is not in sync with liberalism. All right. There's a big difference between an Alan Dershowitz liberal and a, and a Democrat party progressive. They're totally different. Totally different. Um, one other question, uh, uh, cause I don't understand this. Democrats have asked Biden to surrender the keys on the nuclear launches. What they're doing is they're trying to take away the president's sole authority to launch nuclear weapons because they say it could just happen too fast. And they want him to uh, be forced into some sort of a committee uh, before anything is launched. So he wouldn't have the, the nuclear football keys. It would be with a committee. What the hell is that? It's, it's extremely concerning. Look, uh, I mean, and it's, from my point of view, your point of view, I'm sure it's hard. It is hard to actually assess what you trust less. Um, uh, a Biden who can't finish sentences very well or a crazy Democrat party. But, but, but in the end, you don't, it, it's pretty obvious what they're doing. And Nancy Pelosi laid the groundwork for this um, even before Biden took office, talking about invoking the 25th Amendment. And it was pretty obvious she wasn't even talking about Trump. So, look, it, I, I think they obviously know that he, he has cognitive issues. But um, it, the, the good news for America is that Biden's demeanor in general disposition is not to go just go launch nuclear bombs. No, uh, you know I'll, I'll say a lot of things about the guy, but I, I don't think that's what his plan is. No. Um, and so this th th this feels a little bit disingenuous. And I also feel like it, I mean, if he woke up one day and he was, you know, suddenly temporarily insane, and he said, "Let's launch the missiles," there's there are people and systems in place to stop that madness. Um, all right. right. Let, he doesn't have it under his bed, right? It's not like in his yeah. bathroom. We're talking to uh, Congressman Dan uh, Crenshaw. You are in Congress, so you see what's what's coming our way. The the things the Biden administration is doing and Congress is is proposing with green the Green New Deal, et cetera, et cetera. This is this is all about changing every aspect of our life. It's all about control and power. Uh, and I don't mean that in the electricity sort of way. Uh, and it is it's terrifying when you look into the way that corporations are now starting to incorporate what are called ESGs, uh, environmental, social justice and governmental standards, which uh, are a little terrifying when you understand the scope of what that means to the average person. Yeah, so so a lot to take in there. This, I think the, the quickest way to boil all this down is there's there's a there's a quite a different disposition on the left and the right. You, you have to boil all of our policy differences down to the psychological disposition. And on the left, that disposition is this: we want to change the nature of man, and we believe we can. We believe we can use the the forces of government and the forces of institutions 
to fundamentally change you. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep fighting for that revolution no matter what. We're not really sure where that revolution goes. See, this is where it all falls apart because utopianism is, well, it's, it's nowhere. I mean, it literally means nowhere in Greek uh, because it can't exist. And you'll kill yourself trying to get there. Um, the, the right has a different disposition, a far more humble disposition that, look, there's, there's, there's about the best we can do with governance. So you, you cannot change the nature of man, but you can provide a good system and, and, and structural incentives and disincentives to get the best outcome. All right. So that, that's, a, that's a fundamental difference that, that does not change. It's almost like people are born that way. This is where all of this nonsense comes from, you know, right. and they're always looking for ways to, 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 to thwart it. And we're always trying to point out to people, look, I know this feels good. I know this feels like they're promising utopia, but we promise you that the that that the, the, the road to good and you know the, the the path to hell is paved with good intentions, and this this turns out to be true every single time. Uh, last week is another indication of that. Um, Dan, uh, I want you to know I'm going to be making a call today, and uh, you you're probably going to hate that I say this, but I'm going to be making a call today after the program for the very first time since last week. Uh, a name has come to me that I need to pass on to Premier Radio uh, Networks on a replacement for Rush Limbaugh. I think you could replace Rush Limbaugh. That answer was so clear uh, and explaining a very complex thing. I, I, uh, this is why we would like you to be on doesn't the show. He, doesn't he already have a job? No, he already I has think, a yeah. job, but, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe you can do, I can do it. Yeah. I have a podcast, too, you know. I have a podcast. There you go. Uh, where, what's the name of your podcast? Uh, Hold These Truths. Hold These Truths. Okay. Dan, yeah. thank you. We'll talk well, I appreciate again. Appreciate the compliment, Gunn. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate the compliment. <laughs> the, the, quite the compliment coming from you. I really appreciate it. You bet. Great being on with you. You bet. Bye-bye. Dan Crenshaw.